Well, good morning guys. Um, this is the dam, the bank or whatever. And just over the other side of that is the lake that I paddled on a few weeks back. Now, no one's fishing today. I didn't see anybody, but who knows, maybe on the other side of the lake. As I've often mentioned, it's an ornamental lake. Uh, used to be a big house not far from here. This was part of the grounds. Um, it's just a little wander around the woods and explore and chat and whatever. So, I'll see you in a minute guys. Well, just took a piece of hazel from this small stand here. Um, and there it is on the ground. I'm going to take it up to my little spot for a project. Well my friends, don't you just love autumn? Look at these wonderful colours through the trees. Absolutely gorgeous. Of course it comes to the ground as well. Yeah, it's a pretty special time. We're right on the liminal edge of autumn now. We're sort of at that time between winter and autumn. Between one season and the next. It's a relatively mild day, it's not that cold today. If the wind got up it probably would add a bit of a chill to the air. But honestly this is absolutely gorgeous. Love these colours. Right, um, I'm going to have a, an open fire today. And, well, hopefully, and this piece of hazel I cut earlier, I'm going to cut it about there with my uh, jack law knife and I'm going to proceed to make a pot hanger, you know, just the sticking it down, very, very simple one. So, one knife, and here we go. Always work. Sorry this is out of camera shot guys, but always work either to your left or to your right when you knife with your knife, never between your legs. There's too much that could go wrong. You slip, cut your femoral artery and you've got about eight seconds. For you that will seem like an eternity, for everybody else they'll be rushing around like anything trying to save it. So there's my stick, I'm just going to sned this a bit, get rid of these little side branches. Right. Now, um, what I'll do in a minute is I'll do a close-up shot. Uh, I'll just tidy this end up. Basically what I do was a rose, what I call a rose cut. It's just, you cut round like a petal and you just trim it off. It's a bloody good knife, Sandy. You can use many other woods, I mean there's there's some sweet chestnut around here that's of, of this thickness and the trouble with sweet chestnut is it really stains your blade right now there are many ways of actually cutting, this has got a natural bend in it so I want to have the notch on the top here so what I'll do is I'll mark a little mark about there Right, there's many ways of doing a notch. Um, you can do a cross cut like that and you cut back into it. That's great for when you're using a weldon stick as well. Um, today I'm just going to use a, uh, a um, what I call a, a, a uh, butt notch. Basically you, you force it down across the grain and then you basically end up with a U-shaped notch. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I'll come up closer to the camera. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut across like so, then carve up. And you cut into it.
turn the stick around and enable me to work from the other side. And there you are, that notch should will stop your thing, you will stop your billy can or kettle from slipping down the, down the line. Right at the other end, basically a point. We can cut across like that. With a thinner piece of wood you can actually do this in three cuts. If I was using my axe I could do it in three cuts as well but we don't always carry an axe with us. And a lot of times we don't need to carry the axe with us. Nice piece of hazel this. I might store this, I've got to... Right. That's sharp enough to stick into the ground. Put the knife away. Right. And there we go guys, one pot hangery stick. Hang the kettle on that, have a brew up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off, get my fire going and see you all in a bit. Well, the wood's quite damp. It's damper than I thought it would be, but I've utilised some old fire dogs that are lying around. They seem quite dry, and it's not too bad. The fire's going well, and I'm quite pleased with it. Just wait for the water to boil, and I can have myself a brew. Something magical and mystical about an open fire. Got all these old fire dogs burnt away, and it'll be good. So, guys, here we are again. <coughs> Got my fire going. It's not burning as well as I thought it might, but the wood stamp, and you know, it's uh, it's just one of them things. It's heat, it boiled the water for the tea and it's cooking my uh, red salmon biryani. Basically it's a packet of rice and a tin of red salmon. Um, it smells quite delicious actually. The pot hanger is working quite well. <coughs> I did have plans to do a few other things with the uh, stick but basically the sticks ended up being the pot hanger. I was going to make some uh, pegs, demonstrate making pegs. Um, I'm trying to get back. There's a lot. There's a lot of um, within bushcraft. There's a lot of kit fetish. I mean, for some people, bushcraft is kit fetish. And if you can't buy it in the shop, then it's not worth it, according to these guys. But to me, it's making use of what's around you. Okay, I've got a, th a thermal mug and I've got a billy can. Thermal mug keeps my tea hotter longer. I don't care for um, cold tea. It's been quite a good, quite a good week actually. Um, Christmas is on the horizon. I already know what I'm getting for my uh, Christmas presents, and quite looking forward to using one of them and reading the other. <coughs> Trying to get back into carving again. It's just, I just never seems to be enough hours in the day. Now. Having said that, talking about carving, I saw someone uh, with a Kemp pattern axe you, and made a comment, you know, saying that this axe is used primarily in coppice work. It's used for um, splitting and snedding and carving. And often you get left handed and right handed blades, and that's how the blades ground. A right handed blade, if you're looking at, looking at the blade, looking at the blade from the handle up you will find that this side is more or less flat so it can be worked with a, by a right handed person obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's nice, the weather's mild, I'm in, fact, I'm, in a, I'm in a shirt and my vest and that's it. It's very mild today. 
Uh, it has been cold at night, so we've had a few really doozy frosts, really nice frosts. Um, there's a bit of cloud cover at the moment. I mean, it's nice and sunny. In fact, it looks absolutely gorgeous from here. The sun's coming through, there's, there's smoke coming up, and it's looking gorgeous. The sign of damp wood. Plenty of, plenty and plenty of smoke. Um, yeah, the wood is damp, and it's a good challenge. It's a good challenge to get a, an open fire going. You know, I tend not to go for bow drills, uh, basically because I find it really tires me out. Um, the knowledge is there, it's all up in there and it's all in the muscle, but you know, when none of us are getting any younger, we move inexorably towards into time rather than back. Sometimes it would be nice to be able to go back in time. I often think, you know, if I could have some of this knowledge now and go back to when I was a youth, oh man. Wouldn't life be exciting? But then again, it's exciting now. Okay, I might not be a teenager anymore. In fact, I'm on the wrong side of 56. And, okay, it's not too bad. But I'm enjoying life, and I really am enjoying it. As some of you may know, I got married, uh, in fact, two months ago. No, three months ago. Three months ago I got married in August. And it was great. One of the best things I ever did. It's probably the best thing I ever did. But I had to wait a long time to find the right person. Um, got a lovely little doggy. He's sitting over there. He's just popped his head up. He's looking a bit glum because I've got a pocket full of treats and I haven't given him. Well, I gave him a treat earlier. As I was piling some birch bark in my pocket, he thought he was getting a treat. Um, as I was saying, there's not much been going on. I, I'm trying to develop my videos a bit more, add a bit more of a dimension to them, doing stuff from my man cave, you know, making up things like I was showing snoods the other day and making up long lines. Um, I'll be doing a pattern off the rig as well, and I'm looking to building a small rod uh, for use on the canoe. Um, I'm talking about canoes and going off on a tangent. Saw an amazing picture on uh, Facebook someone shared, and it's a guy, and I, I would assume it's out in Southeast Asia somewhere. He's made a boat out of plastic bottles, so anything's possible. It's a good, it's a good way of recycling materials, and it's a grand thing. Um, I really like that. It is, it, is, it is a wonderful thing to look at. Okay, would never win a design award by using up all them old plastic bottles. Again, plastic bottles can come in useful. Uh, and I think it was on Eat the Beach, a chap in there suggests using plastic bottles to make shrimp and prawn traps as well. I'm going to have a go at doing that over the coming year. Uh, I have it in mind to get myself a uh, push net for shrimping and many other things to go down. I want to get a bit more sea fishing in this year, I mean this coming year and also a little bit more freshwater fishing but more on that in another video because I'm, I'm a definitely a hook it and cook it guy and it wouldn't go down too well around here. Um, life is good. Anyway guys, I'm going to sign off for a bit, maybe film a couple more bits in a minute and then I'm going to have my lunch, wander around these woods a bit more, maybe have another broth. I have brought a Trangia cooker out with me and uh, that was there as an emergency, it's a backup. Well that's a little fold away Trangia, you know, a little triangle, really good piece of kit. Anyway guys, I'm going to get my lunch on the go, well the lunch is on the go, and it looks like it's bubbling away nicely. So, see you all down the line. I'm going to have something to eat.